This is just a short video to hopefully help some other people eliminate the confusion with the rudder lines on the Prindle 16 that I experienced. I'll note, I'm not a sailing expert, not a catamaran expert, not a Prindle expert. The handles on the ends of the lines are kind of arbitrary. You may have the little balls, you may have bars. Um, whichever you have, um, you're going to pick one for the rudder up and one for the rudder down. It's kind of arbitrary. Um, it's kind of nice to have the bar for the rudder up. You need to exert a little more force, um, in my experience, to get that up. You're going to take the rudder up line and push it through the slot at the top of the rudder arm. You want to push it through so that it's on the outside, which is towards us in this video, of the little bolt that um, the rudder arm pivots on. When you can see it come out, you're going to want to pull it out and pull it uh, over the sheave that's on the outside of the rudder, rudder casting. And then you're going to take the bitter end and come out and around the little sheave or spacer, the, the plastic spacer um, at the bottom. You've heard Prindle rudders described as fidgety. You can probably see why they're called that. Pull that bitter end around that spacer, come back up. And you're going to come around the backside of the middle sheave. and then over. Sometimes it helps to have a screwdriver or a pair of needle nose pliers. You grab the end of that line, pull it out, and you can see how it operates. Next, you're going to grab the rudder down line. This one has a ball on the end. And you're going to poke it through the little hole at the bottom of the rudder arm. And you want to make sure that run the lines on opposite sides of the pivot bolt so they don't interfere with each other. And just like the rudder up, you're going to pull it out, go over the top of the sheave that's on the inside of the rudder casting. And then you're going to take the bitter end and go behind the little spacer and down, and then behind the bolt that holds the bottom of the spring. And if you pull the other side of the rudder down line, you'll see it operating. You're going to grab your rudder, put the bolt through the rudder casting, through the rudder, through the other side of the rudder casting, put the nut on, tighten it down, don't over tighten it. Then you're going to take that rudder line, and there's a little hole, it's probably a quarter inch. Um, on the upper rear part of the rudder. You're going to poke it through that hole until it comes into the opening in the rudder where you can see the bitter end there. Poke it out, pull it out, and then tie off either a square knot or a figure eight knot, whatever you can get to fit in there. A square knot seems to work just fine. Once you've got it tied, pull it back into the little opening. And make sure that it's flush so that it's not catching on the rudder casting when you lower it. You can do the same thing for the rudder down line. Poke it through the front of the rudder. Once you can see it, poke it out, tie off a square knot. Pull it back into inside the opening, make it flush, and now your rudder is ready to go. If you pull the rudder down line, it's going to pull the rudder down and it'll engage, hopefully, if you've got it adjusted right and catch and be where you want it to be. When you come up on the beach, you can pull the rudder up line and it will pull the rudder into the up position and you can 
cleat the um, the line off into the little um, notch there on the top of the rudder arm, and it'll stay up. This is the pin that holds the rudder in the down position, and it engages on the bottom bolt uh, that holds the springs. <laughs> 